Welcome back to my Painted Anatomy playlist, the series on which I draw anatomical structures over my own skin. The flexor pollicis brevis is a broad, short, intrinsic muscle of the palmar surface of the hand. It's a two-headed muscle with a superficial and a deep head and the most distal of the three muscles of the finar eminence, the large muscular bulge we have on our hand proximal to the thumb. As the name suggests, the flexor pollicis is going to flex the pollicis, aka the thumb or the first finger. And it's the flexor pollicis brevis, the brief or short flexor of the pollicis. So, if we have a short flexor of the thumb, then we must surely also have a long flexor of the thumb. Otherwise, we would just call it the flexor of the thumb muscle. So, if we call it the flexor pollicis brevis, it's because the flexor pollicis brevis is the intrinsic flexor of the thumb, the one that originates and inserts on the hand, originates and inserts on the same compartment, therefore an intrinsic muscle, whereas we will also have the flexor pollicis longus, which originates in the forearm and acts upon the hand, therefore being an extrinsic muscle. So, as suggested by the name, by pulling the thumb towards the wrist, the flexor pollicis brevis will achieve its main function of metacarpal phalangeal flexion. However, since you are pulling the thumb towards the wrist, some degree of carpal metacarpal flexion will also occur. And since the thumb as all fingers is a three-dimensional structure, pulling it through a single insertion is going to cause it to rotate. I love the cylinder analogy because when you try to pull a cylinder towards you on an axis, if you are making just a single contact point, you are going to cause the cylinder to rotate when attempting to pull it. And the same happens with the thumb. So, when you pull the thumb towards the wrist through a lateral insertion, you are going to cause some degree of internal rotation as well. This is not exclusive to the flexor pollicis brevis and is rather just a consequence of the laws of physics. You will observe this with many other muscles. Then, since we mentioned an insertion, let's talk about the origins. The flexor pollicis brevis has two heads. The most important one is the superficial head, which is always present. However, there is also a deep head of the flexor pollicis brevis, which is highly variable in size and may even not be present. The superficial head, like most short muscles of the palmar side of the hand, originates from the flexor retinaculum and from something else. In the pollicis brevis superficial head case, it means the flexor retinaculum, the transverse ligament above the carpal tunnel, and the tubercle of the trapezium carpal bone. The deep head, which may not be present, originates from the trapezoid and capitate bones, and sometimes also from the ligaments of the distal carpal row, meaning from the ligaments between the carpal bones that are most distal. So, if both heads have multiple insertions, why not just call it one head with plenty of insertions? Well, one reason would be because there is something between those heads. Because between both heads, the superficial and the deep heads of the flexor pollicis brevis, is the tendon of the flexor pollicis longus. Makes perfect sense. Wouldn't you expect both flexor pollicis to be close together? They exert pretty much exactly the same function. So, the flexor pollicis longus will go exactly in between both heads of the flexor pollicis brevis. The superficial head has, in fact, 
the same origins of the opponent's policies muscle beneath it. However, contrary to the opponent's policies, the flexor policies brevis is going to insert in the radial base of the proximal phalanx of the fourth finger, aka the thumb, which makes complete sense because you want to pull the finger towards the wrist, but you would rather pull it internally. You have no use for flexing the finger completely away from your wrist. And the two heads are going to join together to a tendinous insertion to a sesamoid bone. A sesamoid bone is a bone completely enveloped by tendon or muscle, and they are pretty common on insertions, especially in the hand. Now, if you've watched my abductor policies brevis video and you were expecting us to get to the easy part now, I'm sorry to disappoint, but the supply innervation of the flexor policies brevis is not that straightforward because of its two heads. The superficial head, the most important one, the largest one, like all the muscles of the finar eminence, is innervated by the recurrent or motor branch of the median nerve. Makes complete sense. The side of the hand is innervated by the median nerve, and the finar eminence muscles are all innervated by the recurrent branch. However, the deep head of the flexor pollicis brevis is a bit of an exception. Because it's the only part of a muscle in the finar eminence that's innervated by the deep branch of the ulnar nerve. But it isn't completely absurd, because it's the deep head of the flexor pollicis brevis and it's innervated by the deep branch of the ulnar nerve. So there is some logic to it. But that's the one exception to the rule of finar eminence innervation. When I said that all the muscles of the finar eminence are innervated by the recurrent branch of the median nerve last video, and I said asterisk, this is what I meant. The deep head of the flexor pollicis brevis is actually innervated by the deep branch of the ulnar nerve, just like some other muscles we've already seen. Furthermore, since the recurrent branch of the median nerve is going to innervate the finar eminence and the flexor pollicis brevis is the most distal of the finar eminence muscles, the recurrent branch of the median nerve runs atop superficially over the flexor pollicis brevis. And when it comes to blood supply, we can draw similar conclusions. The superficial head, the most important one, the largest one, is superficial. Therefore, it's going to be supplied by the superficial palmar branch of the radial artery. Makes complete sense. The radial artery is right here, very close, and it's a superficial head, it's going to be supplied by the superficial palmar branch. The superficial palmar branch of the radial artery is actually the branch that's going to connect with the superficial palmar branch of the ulnar artery to form the superficial palmar arch. However, we also have the deep head of the flexor pollicis brevis. And the deep head is not going to be supplied by the superficial branch. So, it will be supplied by other branches of the radial artery, the artery that's close by. It will be supplied by a branch to the pollicis, to the thumb, the principal pollicis artery, the main artery to the thumb, and by the radialis indices artery the radial branch for the index finger radialis indices princeps policies. This will supply the deep head. However, the most important head, the superficial one, 
is going to be supplied by the superficial palmar branch. So, if you must remember just one, remember the superficial head. But if you are unsure about hand arteries, make sure to check my paint anatomy playlist, and particularly the hand anatomy videos. After all, you are interested in hand anatomy, you've watched this video until the end. E se você fala português, certifique-se de ver também o meu canal em português. Thank you for watching all the way to the end, and I hope to see you on the next video.